Charlotte's here for potato boxes. Amy talked me into redoing our potato boxes. We had some that we did years ago that were on their last leg. So I just said, we'll just make some new ones. I had some wood <laughs> available in my wood pile, but uh, they're super easy to make and anybody can do it. <laughs> all right, so um, all, all it is is really just a box. And so you need four posts. You can just use two by fours. Um, and then you need a variety of like slats to go around it. Uh, and you, well, anyways, I'll get to that. So say again what you're making and why you're making it's it. A, it's a potato box and I'm making it so you can grow potatoes vertically so it doesn't take up as much room. So there's going to be four posts like this and then there's going to be boards at the bottom that go kind of all the way around and then as you, as the potatoes grow, you fill them with dirt and add more boards around so you kind of grows up. And then when you harvest them, you kind of just take the boards off and take all the potatoes out. So um, I'm using cedar because I had it and it's uh, a natural, like it's naturally uh, preservative. It, like the bugs don't like it very much. So um, I had some, so I just cut the, these boards down, but you can just get two by fours. These are a two by six cut in half, but and then I just had some cedar uh, boards here as well. You can use, I would, if I was gonna go buy stuff, I would just go get some cedar two by fours and some cedar fence posts, fence planks. And that's pretty economical way to, to do it if you wanna do cedar. You can do it with anything, but it just won't last as long. Oh wait, one more thing. Uh, how tall did you make those and why did you make them that tall? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is 32 inches tall, so, um, and you could make them like any height, but it just makes it easier when you're like throwing in the dirt or like you're reaching in to grab the potatoes and stuff. Cause if they were like this hall, tall, then you, you know, you couldn't really reach in there. So start asking me questions or something. Like <laughs> yeah. Ask them questions. <laughs> no, you ask oh, me questions. asking like, questions. You're my sidekick now. <laughs> So you gotta, like, you know, I'm the cross legacy sidekick right, right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we started doing this probably like 10 years ago and we've had the same boxes forever and, um, we are always talking about moving. And so we kept like, Oh, we can get one more year out of these. We can get one more year. And I'm like, people keep asking how we're planting these potatoes and how you do things. So, um, then he's like, well, I'll just make new ones. So, and then when I said that dad was making new ones, then um, we got the, oh, I need to know how to do that too. And um, does he just wanna bring some over? <laughs> I'm like, no, this is just a scrap wood that he had. Um, but if we did a little video, then it would teach other people how to do it. So what are you doing now, honey? Um, I'm, I'm just starting to fasten the boards together. So I'm just using uh, screws. Uh, these are just the, the least expensive screws that I have, so that's all I'm using. This isn't anything that's like fancy. I mean, it's going to be outside. It's going to be covered in dirt, so it doesn't really need to be too crazy. But what did you do with that tool? What tool was that? Oh, oh, oh. Talk to me like I don't know anything because I don't know anything when okay, it comes so to... Okay, so this <laughs> is uh, a drill, and this is my impact driver, and I use this to countersink and drill a pilot hole through the top board so it doesn't split this. And then, um, so I drilled those and it like countersinks a little bit so the screw is flush. And then I'll use this to drive the screw into both boards. So if they didn't have a shop full of tools, could they do this with just hammer and nails? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. You could totally do this with hammer and nails um, if, you, if you wanted to. I don't because this is just easier and hammering nails is like the nails bend over and I'm not like a pro I'm not a carpenter so but you could just do this with oh for sure wood and nails yep. and a hammer so like anybody could do this yep. um fun fact and you could if use, you and you could use like a hammer
I used a power saw and everything and a table saw and stuff, but you could just use a hand saw to cut this or... Or if you buy the wood at Home Depot and know the sizes, they'll cut it for you for free, yeah. um, which is really cool too. So you can go in. I wouldn't suggest a Saturday morning to do that, um, but you can go in and tell them what size wood that you want and they will cut it for you. So you could just bring it home and do um, a project quick and easy. Oh, my auntie's on here. Hey, Aunt B. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's kind of fun. I mean, there's lots of people on here, but my Aunt B's on here, so <laughs> she is watching, um, which is funny. Well, not funny. It's amazing. My aunt is amazing, and she sends a card for every single holiday and our birthdays, and she never, ever forgets, and um, somebody had... I guess I've got the... I need a second. You're fine. <laughs> um, somebody had hand-delivered one the other day because it got delivered to the wrong house, and it had showed up... Um, and they came over and delivered it. And while they were delivering it, my other cousin was here helping. And so um, it was just fun that um, we all were getting some of the Aunt B love at the same time. <laughs> and um, it was nice of one of our neighbors to drop it off um, when it got delivered at the wrong, the wrong house. So, um, anyways, so he's making potato boxes. If you're just jumping on, and he's just using scrap wood. When we go and do the description for this, we'll say exactly what size um, wood that you need. I'm not like dressed. I'm just wearing what I was wearing. But um, these are, we get the bags from a local nursery, but these are French fingerlings that we're going to be putting in one of the boxes. And then I have russets for another box. And then this is a random potato that was left over from last year's harvest. Um, that started growing so I'm just gonna throw that in and see what else it does but these normally um, they come by weight so there's normally around eight to ten potatoes in them and um, the russets is a two and a half pound bag and the um, fingerlings are a one pound bag so you can totally just use um, organic potatoes that you get from the store too if you don't have a greenhouse or a nursery nearby that have them and normally we plant them around St. Patrick's Day um, for our area but it has been raining the whole last week and today well it's still raining today but it's not as rainy so um, so he is just so I, I had to get longer screws because uh, these boards are they're what they're really for is for a deck and so they're a little bit thicker than fence boards and fence boards is what I used last time so I grabbed the same screws as last time but these boards are a little bit thicker so I had to get bigger screws and fortunately I have a whole bunch what size screws are those that you're using well these ones are inch and three quarters okay but it just matters you just got to make sure that they're deep enough so that they're going to go through this board into the other board. Do you guys have any questions while we're on here? This will end up being cut down to a shorter um, video. Somebody said hi. So if you're just jumping on, Mike is making potato boxes for us to grow potatoes. Um, they are the same style boxes that we've used for about 10 years and our old ones were falling apart. And so he decided to make new ones and show you guys how he's doing it. And then in the description, um, we will have the instructions for what size boards to um, get cut. So uh, This is just a square that I'm using, not necessary, but it just helps keep things somewhat uh, straight and angled right. So how do you use it? So you just put, there's a, a lip on this edge and you put it on one of the boards and then you use this other edge if you want like a 90 uh, degree angle so to get perfectly square. So you just put it on and then line it up and for potato boxes, uh, probably not necessary, but it helps. <laughs> 
Somebody was worried um, the other day that I was picking all of my dandelions to make dandelion jelly. As you see, we have plenty of dandelions still left. Um, I don't like mowing the grass until after more of our flowers have um, started blooming. <laughs> so it's not where I'm totally just lazy, but I don't. I like the honeybees to be able to um, be able to feed off of the dandelions when they're first waking up in, in the springtime, and so. We did, we did um, harvest like three cups of dandelions the other day, but there are plenty still here. Mike can't concentrate and talk at the same time, so. Um. <laughs> That's for sure. So the other uh, kind of trick that I did is I cut all of the boards that go horizontal, I cut them all the same size these ones are two feet and what I do is I I did that and which is fine and if you want it to be square it doesn't really matter but so you can just um, kind of like stage them so that they are kind of um, overlapping so they meet up this way and then this way so it kind of follows um, kind of a pattern as it goes around so this is how the bottom of the box is going to look I'm trying to show the angles there and the, this is what's going to go up and then you're going to just keep adding the boards on the outside as the as the potatoes grow cover them up and then you keep growing so when it gets to the top then you can start harvesting and you can just dig in there or just take these boards down so he builds a frame and we only do like it two boards high right now and then um, that way as it grows and they start they start growing up then you add more dirt to it and add another we well, add another layer of boards then add more dirt to it and then they keep growing taller and that way you get a bigger um, potato harvest right and um, I put a, I'll put two boards on the bottom and then one board on the top just to kind of keep it a cube keep it stabilized and we can move it and put them in place and you can put these anywhere we put them just uh, outside our garden. So the potatoes that I harvest last fall, like in September, we just finished using those a couple weeks ago, right at the beginning of March. Um, and then I store them. I have a video. We can link that too. I have a video on how I store them in the pantry. Um, and I keep them dirty while they're being stored. And then um, they last, what was that, like six months? Five months, March, six, six, six months. Um, and then they last right up until when it's time to start planting them again. So um, it's kind of a fun little cycle. If you have any questions while you're on here, um, let me know. And otherwise, we're just going to film Mike doing this. <laughs> so um, we can make a YouTube video out of it later. And he can show you how he's uh, balancing this all by himself. <laughs> he's laughing at me. <laughs> When I do things, it's a lot of trial and error, and even though I've done something before, it, um, it's a lot harder to do stuff while you're on a live video, Amy. <laughs> you didn't know it was going to be live. <laughs> it turned into potato boxes, to oh, a few pictures, to oh, I'll take a video, to now it's live, and everybody can see all my mistakes. That's how we do it. <laughs> no, that's how you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no perfectionism here. <laughs> Let's yeah. just get it done. <laughs> My last one, um, I had, I had painted it white because my garden beds are white. Um, before I had really known about the fact that you shouldn't paint things that you're growing in. Um, so I probably wouldn't paint these again, even though I love the way the white ones look. Um, but the paint isn't the best thing to be growing something in. Um, so that's up to you, what you want to do. Um, but our last ones were from like 10 years ago and it was before where I was more worried about um, with how something looked than the fact that maybe the paint wasn't the best thing. Um, Husky444 wants a shout out, shout out, but to say anything about a Husky, we have to say, go Cougs! <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, okay. Um, Leslie's asking, can he reuse the boards or we, do we new, do we use new boards every year? Um, these, our old one was 10 years old and it was like, we kept like debating whether or not we were going to, um, just hold out one more year and we were going to move. And then, um, then since I wanted to take a video, Mike was like, they're just almost falling apart. We should just make new ones. Um, so he does keep the boards, um, when we take them off, we keep the big frame up all year long. And then when he takes them off, he just uses those same boards every year. And we didn't go buy any new boards. These are just scrap pieces that he had. Um, when we get all done with this, I'm going to have him write out the description of, um, what boards that you need. And, um, if you were going like a shopping list for Home Depot, we'll, we'll do it a little how to recipe of how to do this. But anyways, he has a blank spot on the blog that's called the hubs domain. So as we get this, um, all together, we will put the video link, which will end up on YouTube. We'll put the video link and the instructions and everything, um, over on the crosslegacy.com under the hubs domain. So it's not, um, empty anymore but um oh he is using like fancy tools um i said it just a minute ago but um all these boards you could have cut like at home depot they cut them for you if you have the measurements for them um so we will make a list if he um if you you know just took them straight to home depot and had them cut what you would need um and you he's using like fancy tools you don't need to use fancy tools like a hammer and nails is just fine and um i will even his he's like me where he likes um bigger packages of tools that we use things that we use so you don't need that many screws <laughs> i have no idea do you buy screws by the pound or like that is a tub of screws. <laughs> it is, it is. So, um, we're redoing our house, as a lot of you guys know, and so these are the screws that I that I bought to when I tore up our carpet. I have any boards that are any plywood that's loose on our subfloor, I use these screws to screw them down. But somebody doesn't need to buy a box that big. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's I what bought I was a like. lot. I bought a lot for that reason. Yeah. You can buy. When you go to the store, you can buy one screw or you can buy hundreds. It doesn't, I mean, it just depends. But on what it. does, how much is that normal little box that you buy? Normally, it'd be like under $10. Okay, that's what I was doing. Okay, so I said yay for the hubs, right? He's pretty handy. I do not know how to do anything with a power tool at all. Um, oh, you're getting all the hearts, Mike. Um, reuse the boards. Is there any other questions? The screen is really hard to see because we're outside. And the sun decided to come out. <laughs> so I said no squeaky floors. Yeah. There was, um, under the carpet, there was a couple spots. There's still one spot on the stairs that we're still working towards, but this little kitchen remodel that we started not little kitchen remodel is turning into a whole house remodel so we are yeah let's let's you keep hounding me on a kitchen remodel that's taking forever but there's <laughs> other stuff like i've been in the hallway i've been in the living room uh everywhere 
Yeah, it's going to be... The whole bathroom has been... I didn't do it, but the whole bathroom has been redone. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when this house does get finished remodel, we are the typical Americans where we're going to move probably immediately afterwards. <laughs> we started with the outside of our house and did the roof and, um, Mike painted the house and then it's just been one project after another. So I said, the house is looking good. It's good. But um, he got four doors up last week. And then he's working on the hood. And then today I was like, you're not working in the kitchen. Because I went grocery shopping last night. And I need to do videos for all the produce items. Um, and so I'm taking over the kitchen today. And so he's out here building potato boxes. I'm like kind of impressed I haven't had a hold anything yet. With what? That I haven't had a hold anything yet. Do you normally have to hold stuff? No. <laughs> he normally I mean, figures it out on his own. One man show. <laughs> He's a one man wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody notice your uh, reel? Which one? My doppelganger one. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think he looks like old Joey? Oh, hey now. <laughs> hey, watch your mouth. <laughs> Man with a plan. Matt LeBlanc. The gray hair hairstyle has definitely, like, <laughs> added. added to his Joey impersonation. But they don't know if you are like Joey unless you do the line. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. This will end up being cut into a smaller, shorter video with the instructions, and we'll put it on YouTube. Um, but I think it's good sometimes to see the whole process um, and see if there's any little tricks that he does while he's doing it that he wouldn't have thought about writing down when we put it on the blog. Yeah, when it's, um, it's handy if you're kind of doing this and you're out here in the grass, you're not on anything level, like this is totally... Uh, Get her done style. Yeah, like normally you'd have like a nice flat surface, workbench or whatever, but so anyways, one thing to help using this is you can put, get it close, put one screw in and then line it up. And then with only one screw in, you can just make a small adjustment, move the board, and then you can drive the rest of the screws in. If you didn't have that square, the triangle that is called the square. Could you use like a piece of cardboard or something that was a corner? <clears throat> yeah, you could. Um, uh, there's many ways to do this, but you could. You could just build like. Um, you could do this a lot differently. I I chose to do. Anyways, you could just build this so that there's. These two boards are just the same, meaning you could just make it, it wouldn't be a perfect square technically, so anyways, it's not a big deal, but you could just make two board, like, you could just make this kind of like a frame, kind of like a, like a square, like this, and then you could just do that, you can make two of them, and then you could just add the other boards on the side. And so how you would do it, um, to get, if you didn't have a square, you can just measure the diagonals. So measure from this corner to this corner, and measure from this corner to this corner, and they should be the same. If they're the same, then huh. it's square. There you go. So that's a, a trick or tip, I guess. I don't know, not really a trick.
So if you're just jumping on, he's making potato boxes. And this is how we grow our potatoes. So our last ones were like 10 years old. And um, it was time for new ones. Because um, they were falling apart. And we thought it'd be a good time to show you how we're doing it. So when we get all done with the video and all the things, um, he's going to write out the... Um, board sizes that we need and any other supplies that you would need um, and then it will end up being probably later this week on the cross legacy in the hubs domain that section of the blog it had been empty we hadn't had a chance to put anything up there yet and I thought this was a good project to to do that so If you have any other questions while we're here um just let me know so how come you have some of the boards going um one way and some of the boards going the other way is that's it every because, other one that's because i'm just a goofball that way like i you, you definitely do not have to do that i did it because um of the way that i'm making this but it doesn't have to be that way like i said you can just line up this board could be flat, this board could be turned flat. You put these two on and it's done. And I probably should have done it that way if I would have thought about trying to explain it and why I'm doing it, but um, that way, it, the only reason that is, is just for like, I think it looks cool that way. And I, but again, it's a potato box. So it's like, it's not a big deal. So it doesn't matter with attaching the sides or anything? No. No, okay. no it doesn't matter at all. If you're using these, um, if you did it, the other, like, it doesn't matter. So I'm noticing that this one's flat and that one on the bottom's flat. So I'm assuming that this one's... This one's going to be just like this one. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at it from from the top, you'll see, I'll show you, we'll zoom in on it when we see the, um, you see it here. Mike is a perfectionist. Yes, he is. <laughs> so he is an engineer. <laughs> This is this is actually a super quick project for Mike <laughs> that I would even consider no, doing no it alive. <laughs> there's no like you can do things so many different ways uh, that you can. It doesn't really matter. I tease a lot that my dad is somebody that he was a logger, and so. If he was going to do something, he would have got it done with a chainsaw, and it would have been a hammer and nails, and it would have got done. And um, Mike will make sure that there are not any nails sticking out, or he's using screws and all the things, and that whatever he builds will last a long time. Um, that's part of the... That's the thing that's hard to learn. It's hard to, like... I, I have a mentality of, like, this is going to last forever, but... It, Things don't need to last forever. If they last a year, you're probably doing good. If it's like something like this. Right. You know? Yeah. And nothing's permanent. Like that's the other thing. Like nothing is ever permanent. You can always redo stuff. I mean, it might be very difficult, but it, you can always redo it. Oh, you're getting all the hearts. So again, he's just using scrap boards that we had. Um, but if if we're going to make a list if you were going to go to a hardware store or lumber yard or something and then if you don't have all the saws and stuff um home depot and other places will just cut cut it off and um, cut the boards for you um to the sizes that you need and you could just do this with a hammer and nails so you don't need all of the drills and different tools that he has like you can go and get the boards exactly cut to what you need and just a hammer and nails and be able to make this um, if you didn't have tools. And um, it's it's pretty simple. I think I could actually possibly like figure it out and I don't do anything with wood ever. Um, Cause that's just Mike's thing. So, okay. Somebody said, how warm is it where we are? I think it might be around 50. Um, I was laughing this morning that um, we're in the Seattle area and it is not raining at the moment. It was raining. Well, I was like, oh, I'm going to go outside like right at noon. And right at 11.59, it started pouring. I was like, whatever. <laughs> it's 
So, um, anyways, so it's not raining at the moment, um, which is nice. So we call that a good day. <laughs> and so we take advantage of the good day. When Mike started pulling um, the saws out of the garage, he had to pull a tarp out with it because um, it started raining right as he was trying to do something. Um, somebody said it was 32 degrees where they are. Oh, I wonder where you are. Oh, you're, so you're not a Washington Husky then, huh? So, okay. If you're not a UW Washington Husky, then, you know, that's a whole different story. So, <laughs> we have Washington State Cougars. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's funny. All right, Husky, where are you from? Um, let's see here. Oh, Minnesota. Okay. Okay. As long as you're not a UW Husky. Yeah. <laughs> no. We we still love our Husky friends, but no. We uh, kind of see it starting to take shape now. And the, the reason, there is no reason. It's just that this is the way Mike's brain works. I try to make things as complicated as possible. Oh, yeah, that's true. You do. So. <laughs> All <the> hearts. <laughs> so. What you could do if, uh, would be, like, can you just yep. zoom in on like this? Yeah, you right can here? see it pretty good. Is you could just put these boards together and then flip this one, put right. it together. So you just make two identical All right, frames. you made it harder. Hold on, let me scroll it back. Okay, there you go. Two identical frames and then you just add these, but... Again, all you're doing is making a cube, so it's going to look like this when it's done. Now that you have that board there, show them um, why we do it that height and not taller. Yes, because so you can get in here and dig the potatoes out. Because the, the dirt will be up to here when we're done. And then... And when we're done towards the end of the summer, not today. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I will put another board right here. And then that'll be really it. It'll be two high all the way around the bottom and then one around the top. And we'll fill dirt up too high on the bottom and then plant the potatoes and the potatoes will sprout up. And then as they're getting up, you know, you cover them up with dirt again and then they grow, cover them up and you do that process all the way to the top. And then when it's ready to harvest, which Amy knows when that is, in the fall. Um, you can take the board that is right here, take it out, and then keep taking them down and remove the dirt that way. Or you can just dig it, dig in this way too. Either way. We just move the dirt over into a well barrel too so we can recycle it um, for the next year as we're pulling it out. Um, or we fill in a hole or whatever that needs to be done with it and then add more dirt the next year. But um, but you can totally just reuse the same dirt too if you move it aside carefully in a pile. So the, um, the potatoes grow from the roots. So if you keep covering the green part up, the leaves up, they just keep growing up towards the sun. So instead of just having a little pile of potatoes down at the very bottom then they grow the whole season and they get bigger and they grow to the top so you have three feet of potatoes that are growing instead of like just a few that would grow in the ground we say that um our ground pretty much only um grows rocks so <laughs> it's, it's so rocky this area is it the cool thing is it drains really nicely where yeah. we live yeah um it is if you don't get standing water it's really nice draining. since it rains all the time <laughs> somebody said it's 32 degrees and cloudy in michigan yeah this is kind of the first nice week that we've had um uh, which it still has rain every day but our um our dandelions have just started growing um, like in the last week or so um, and then we don't spray our yard we leave them for the um, well we have chickens and we used to have a bunny that um, was an indoor bunny for a couple of years and then she was an outdoor bunny for a couple of years um, but anyway so we didn't want to spray because she was eating our grass and stuff all the time well and we just don't want to spray but 
I like keeping the dandelions for the first couple weeks um, that they are here. Um, just so they're for the honeybees and before the flowers start growing. And then once the flowers start blooming, then I don't feel so bad about um, cutting the, the dandelions. But I did start dandelion jelly and um, it's in the refrigerator. Um, it's just seeping. Well, I already strained it. So it's just the tea sitting there and then I'm going to make um, jelly with that this weekend. So What I just heard was Amy likes dandelions, which is brand new information for me because she absolutely does not like seeing that line for these two weeks I know, okay let's saying. clarify for these two weeks at the beginning of spring and then no the rest of the year i don't like them and i <laughs> am happy to have the yard cut as often as possible so but for two weeks yes i do like the dandelions um until more of the daffodils and the tulips um <laughs> um bloom so somebody asked how often do we go live it's just random and you never know but i you have caught me a couple times i'm um, live so random that's the key it is random sometimes it is at midnight sometimes it's uh just the after the afternoon kind of thing you just never know um occasionally we do scheduled lives and i put those on youtube when they're actually scheduled scheduled um, because YouTube likes when you have scheduled lives. Um, but a lot of times it's just I'm doing something that I think might be interesting. And then um, we cut the videos down um, and edit them from the live video. But this way, if you are live and you happen to have questions, then you can ask us. And um, it's easier for me, honestly, than doing a um, YouTube live where I stumble or YouTube just video and I stumble over my words. <laughs> So, um, if you guys are asking me questions and giving the little hearts, because that's like everything to me, um, then I think the videos turn out better. But, but this will get cut down to be a shorter video and put on YouTube. So, if you have any questions, it, um, you can ask. Somebody asked, do you get mosquitoes? Yeah, we don't get mosquitoes, it seems, until later in the season. Um, and then mostly like at dusk is like right when yeah. we have mosquitoes. Like soon as it starts getting dusk it's mosquito time um i try to make sure that we don't have any standing water and stuff and i think that helps a little bit and i don't know yeah i think that with the chickens too helps to cut back on having mosquitoes because they eat things so we on this side of the state we don't have ticks and um the other side of the state has ticks um, which is interesting. And then yesterday when I was um, talking in my pantry, um, people were asking me about potato moss, or not potato moss, um, pantry moss. And um, oh, we don't have pantry moss here in our area, but I was giving some tips for um, storing food longer if you do have pantry moss. So he's like squaring those up. One of Mike's big things, I don't know if you saw the story from the other day, is he wants a big barn with a big shop in it and have all of his tools and be able to do projects and not have to pull it out only when it's rainy or only when it's sunny. And then it always rains and he has to pull it, put up a canopy and all the things. So we just have a one car garage um, that's mostly full of freezers. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we clean out the garage, it seems like it gets filled up with stuff again. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, not not a car. A car does not fit in our garage, and um, and his tools and stuff. But right for the last year, we've had tons of stuff um, that we bought for the remodel, and so. I mean, let, let's just clarify uh, a key point in what you said. Uh, you said I wanted a, a huge barn with a shop inside. No, 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 that's not that's not it at all. He wants a huge I barn a shop. Huge shop. <laughs> Period and a story if you shop. <laughs> minimum of 20 by 40, minimum. Probably more like 40 by 60 or a warehouse, whatever. Uh, and then we want another then barn that has barn animals. Yeah. He has this crazy idea of having animals. Uh, you want goats, too. You want goats. <laughs> whose chickens are those, Michael? They're your chickens. You know whose chickens? I know, but you gotta be careful who you say. 
blame two girls. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. We went on vacation. I pull it. We, we came home from vacation. We did. <laughs> there was a chicken coop in my driveway. Literally a chicken coop in my driveway. We had talked about getting chickens, and I had just had them deliver the chicken coop while we were gone. So somebody was selling it, and uh, <laughs> we thought it was a great idea. Um, I thought it was a great idea. So yeah, well, it was great. I mean, you know, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of uh, high school teachers that got eggs and a lot of things like that yep. that happened over the years, which are fun. Yep. So when you have chickens, if you have, like, if you have, if you think about it, you get one egg per day per chicken. So if you happen to have 20 or 30 chickens, you're gonna have a lot of eggs. <laughs> We, there's a, yeah, that is why there's a lot of hearts. That is why I cannot go to the feed store in the spring at all. <laughs> like, I cannot, um, because I just think bringing home baby chicks and having them in my living room for a couple weeks is so much fun. Um, oh, yeah, it's fun. The, the ugly teenage stage of chicken keeping isn't as fun <laughs> when they're a little bit too big for the indoor pit, pin, but not, um, not old enough to be outside all night, but in our um, town, we're only supposed to have um, three chickens. So and we only have three. Weird. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, we're only supposed to have three chickens, but um, interesting enough, our tractor supply only sells them in batches of six. <laughs> so um, yeah. Um, so even though our town can only have three at a time, they sell them in batches of six. Um, but that's so people don't buy them for like Easter baskets and stuff um, and not really want to raise chickens. So they want you to be um, serious about it. Okay. Oh, somebody said, be careful with straw. We got straw for our garden and there was loads of ticks in the straw. Oh, yeah. What? Loads of ticks in the straw. Did it come from Eastern Washington or Oregon? Um, that's interesting. I, I don't put straw on our garden. Um, we normally let the chickens go into the garden in the fall and just take whatever's left so I don't worry about over seasoning. Um, somebody asked if we can show the chickens. Yeah, not right today, but um, we will do more videos for chickens. I am in a dress and I don't want to walk back there with, um, with my dress on because they will be all up on my legs. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay, any other questions? But yes, there will be more videos of the chickens. So if you do see a random little chick video, it is because it's just a repost of an old video and not that I wouldn't have got chickens. Because we better not be. No, I'm not getting chickens this year. So chicks this year. <laughs> Maybe at our new place. Yes, at our new place we will. So hopefully by next spring. Like. <laughs> I just hope whoever like moves into our house likes to garden and stuff because we've like made all these garden beds and stuff of the years. Whoever and moves in, just gonna put in a pool. They might. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we kind of have a bigger um, neighborhood lot. Um, it's an older house, but it's on a quarter acre, um, and so we have plenty of room for our garden beds and different things. And we have. Well, I don't know what the square footage is. The cool thing about cedar is it's, I think it smells so good. Yeah. When you cut it and stuff, it's just so nice. When you're drilling or whatever, and it doesn't, it's a little bit lighter, like it's not as heavy, and it, uh, it's not necessarily as strong, um, you know, for like structural stuff, but like if you're building a house or something, it's more expensive for sure, but it has the, um, you know, pest resistance that's natural. Natural, food. not sprayed on, yeah. not chemicals. So, like, like these boards have been outside just for a very long time, and they're, I mean, I've probably had them covered up here and there, but they just don't, eventually they will deteriorate, but not for a long time. So, again, when I post pictures of the white ones from from before it was before I knew better about painting the white boxes um, and so 
Now I will just keep them the cedar and not paint it. Um, even though I think the white potato boxes were pretty with the with the garden and everything. Um, and then our um, our garden beds are made with um, the plastic fencing, and so that we've had those probably for like at least like 15 years, the same boxes. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so here's the, not totally final, but um, uh, part of it so that uh, you can kind of get an idea of like how big it is. Reach in, and what kind of dirt do you put in here? The, just the garden soil. Just garden soil? Yeah. So yeah, anything you would use for your garden, yeah, here. yeah, in the bags. You can buy it if you have a truck. You can buy it at like a like a dirt place. Like yeah, where they have just it. get the bags. Or you can just get the bags. <laughs> it's way. so much bags easier. Bags are convenient, but it's more expensive. Yeah, just get the bags. I am impressed. It didn't rain this whole time. Okay, how many potatoes can you get from one box? Um, you can get a lot, <laughs> um, like a little barrel full. So um, it just depends on like actually planting them. So planting them should happen like right now for our garden zone. Um, normally we say around um, St. Patrick's Day. And so we're in the Seattle area. If you go to the USDA planting zone, if you just Google that USDA planting zone, you can put in your um, your zip code and you can look up your planting zone by your area. Um, but for us, it's normally St. Patrick's Day is when we're trying to do it, so, or the next sunny day after that. <laughs> um, and then we harvest them in the fall. Um, I normally let them grow as long as I can until it seems like it's going to get super rainy. Um, so if we still have nice weather in September or whatever. I let them go in September. Um, he's just going to build these two tiers like this and then he has cut all the extra boards. So this is all that will be like this. Um, and then we fill it up with dirt and put the potatoes in it. Um, just with these two boards on the bottom. And then um, like in another month or so, then we would add more boards and more dirt to it. And then as the summer progresses, we keep adding more dirt and more boards. So this is- ah, Oh, just kidding. Oh gosh, <laughs> he's such a brat. <laughs> he's a brat. <laughs> don't jinx yourself, Mike. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> oh, he is a brat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it'll just look like this, and it'll sit right outside our garden fence, and, um... Oh, yeah. Um, so I put, I try to put, like, at least three screws, or three screws into the ones that are on the very, very top, and on the very, very bottom, but when you're adding them up like this, oh. you only need one screw in them, because it's not really doing anything other than just holding the dirt back. Uh, somebody called you a brat. <laughs> Weird, I've never heard that before. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's funny. I would have been more worried if he had the saw, but I don't think he even would have joked about it with the saw. Maybe. I don't know. It depends. I'm sorry she didn't take that sticker off right by your face. So. Hey, I, I'm, I'm all about getting it done. Mm -hmm. This isn't about perfection, but now that you pointed it out... It's going to drive you nuts. It drives you nuts. <laughs> oh, it's driving me nuts because it looks like bird poop. <laughs> I should have said something before you put it together. <laughs> it wasn't facing my way. See, and you wonder why I'm a perfectionist. You wonder. You wonder. <laughs> this is a potato box. Here. <laughs> Leslie said it made her jump. <laughs> well, I, I um, but it, it has to be the top. We'll make sure that that is facing the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and... Um, I use, these boards are a little bit thicker, and so I don't have as many of them, so I'll probably um, put fence boards, or fence pickets in between. Uh, the reason I use these thicker ones for sure, you don't have to, but it's because they're a little bit thicker, and so they'll just be a little bit more sturdy. Is 
So he's almost done here. If you have any more questions, let me know. And then we will be posting the measurements and all the instructions probably in the next, well, we'll, we'll try to get it out soonish um, in the next week. And we'll put it on the Cross Legacy at the Hub's Domain in his empty spot that he had there. Um, because we hadn't had time to put anything there. So, he will have all the instructions. Oh, you only put, oh, that's what you were saying. He only put one screw on those. I thought it was the ones that were going up higher. No, no, the, the top, the very top, Okay. I put three in, mm -hmm. and then the very bottom, I put three in, mm -hmm. so that it will Be sturdy, stay yeah. sturdy. Okay. Because you need two, you need a minimum of two to keep them from twisting, right? So. Um, these ones, as you're going up, it doesn't matter. You just need to get them to hold back the dirt. So there's the completed potato box. And we'll fill it up with dirt to, the, to this, plant the potatoes. And then as the potatoes grow, we will add more boards this way, one screw each. And um, it'll be ready and this one these ones are made out of cedar which was cool happen to have it doesn't have to be and um, it won't rot this much show them the bags of potatoes so it's you on video and not me <laughs> just grabbing them so we get these from um, a local nursery or a greenhouse and um, if you, you want, want to do? just hold them up and I'll talk about them but um so this is a one pound bag um, of French fingerling potatoes. And then the other bag has, what's the other bag? Russets? Oh. <laughs> He's not paying attention. Um, the other bag oh. is a two and a half pound bag of russets. But each of these bags have approximately eight potatoes in them. So um, they're just different sizes. So brown eight to 10. And that's how many we need for the They kind of look bed. the same. These ones are just a little smaller. Yeah, so those are smaller. And then you see the eyes um, coming out on them. And then we have one that's left over from last year. Here. Right there. That's starting to grow. So if we put this in the dirt and it's going to continue to grow, then as it starts making a leaf, um, that's when we start adding the dirt to it. So... So then when it starts growing up like that, we just cover it again with dirt and it will keep growing. You cover it all the way with dirt and it just keeps growing up. Um, so as long as it knows to keep reaching for the sun, um, then it keeps growing. So, all right. Any more questions while we're here? I think we're pretty caught up on questions. Somebody said, well done, Mike. Hey, sometimes things come together just <laughs> like you think. So you can see the top how this one and this one were the same this one and this one were the same just the way my brain works each of these boards is two feet and so if you were to make it uh, there's if you were to make it a little bit then it would be because of the board overlap and all that there so it'd be it'd be two feet by a little bit less or a little bit more well, it'd be two feet and a little bit less than two feet or if you do it like this it is about two, it'll be, it's always two feet plus the thickness of the board. So every, every side is two feet plus the thickness of the board. So, but I just did that in there to, I don't know. That's just, just what I do. So instead of saying it overly complicated in words and trying to figure that all out, we're just going to link them back to this explanation <laughs> on the video. <laughs> yeah, see, it's just, it's super easy. All you really need is four boards at the top, four boards at the bottom, and then four, I call them posts, but um, these ones I would get a little bit thicker. You can just get two by fours. You could probably just get two by twos. That would be fine too, um, however you want to do it. There's a million different ways to do it. <laughs> like I literally just made this out of wood that we already had in our yard. And then we reuse the boards every year. We keep this just as it is. And then as they grow, we have those extra boards that we put on the sides and we just, do you already have them cut? He's running to grab them. Um, we just keep those and put them back every year. So he puts less screws in those as it's growing up, as the potatoes are growing up. So um, 
oh, we can keep reusing the same boards in the same holes every year. So, I have a friend that is growing extra yeah. potato starts this year, and um, she just messaged me to say, oh, not potato starts, she's growing extra pepper starts this year, and she has extra room for them, and she just messaged me to say that she has starts for me, so, which is pretty exciting. So these are the, these are the boards from last year, and this, these boards were the only part that was cedar, and the rest of it just totally fell apart, so. It was 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was, yeah. So, you can see where I had the two, one screw on each side, so you just put them in there, like so, and then as you... you can you move it back way, like another foot? Yeah. You like moved it closer to me. There we go. There? Yeah. So you'll just put these in, like so. Oh, there you go. That is a good visual. Just keep doing that up. One, like so. Another one, like so. And I don't know if it's going to fit. I didn't measure, I didn't calculate like I normally would because it's a potato box. I figured I could just cut it down because I have a table saw. Nope. Oh, he was open. <laughs> it, was it was close. But I'll just cut a little bit off of um, one of these. And you can see how... It was, I might not even use this one, but it's a little bit, um, older, older. So yeah, you just keep them there and, uh, I don't know. I like cedar myself because you don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to paint it. You don't have to like do anything. And, um, it just lasts. Does that other board happen to fit there? Is it a little bit different? Are they all perfect sizes? No, they're all, they should be all, these are all the same. Oh, I was just curious if yeah, it was these like are just regular fence boards that you can get at any any place. So I'll make him do all the calculations and everything, so you know exactly what to go buy if you're buying them at the store. Um, but these are perfect, and you can grow potatoes. Um, they they need to go on the ground like this time of the year, and then you pull them out like in the fall when oh when the leaves start dying back is when you know to harvest them so when you see the leaves um, start to turn yellow and die back is when you harvest them or in our case when we're going to get two weeks of straight rain every single day um, that's when I normally um, pick to harvest them and then I have videos and tips that will also link about how I keep them for longer term storage but we harvest them like around September and then I just finished using the last of our grown potatoes the beginning of March. Uh -huh. So another reason why these are two feet long is because these fence boards come in oh, and six, six feet. foot sections. So a six foot fence board, you can just cut it twice and you get three two foot sections. Technically the blade thickness and all that is not going to be exact, but you get what I'm saying? It's going to be one board two. gets you three boards. Yeah, one board gets you three of them. And right now one fence board is about <clears throat> like roughly which just under four dollars we have a chicken out gray? it is a gray chicken this is kind of funny our gray chicken that is not our gray chicken it actually belongs to somebody else in the neighborhood and technically for yeah they just gave up on it <laughs> but for like weeks Almost two years ago, it was coming over and visiting our chickens. Like was, every, was it longer than that? Oh, probably. But until we like finally figured out, anyways, who it was that it belonged to. But every day, it was over at our house from sun up to sundown, and then it would go home to its chicken coop to um, to roost at night, and then. We kept like trying to find out through the neighborhood group, trying to figure out who owned the chicken because we felt bad about it. And then they were like, we can't keep this chicken in the yard. <laughs> and because um, she can jump over six foot fences and um, and she just manages to get out anywhere. <laughs> and, but she has just decided that she lives here. And um, so now she's lived here for like two years. And she is the first chicken that we ever had that had um, white eggs. And so that was kind of a funny thing that... Oh, yeah we only had brown eggs and so to like have a chicken that had white eggs was was fun and then now most of our chickens have white eggs but anyways the other neighbor not a neighbor that has chickens another neighbor 
because the chicken was always going into the yard, she started calling this chicken chicken dinner. And so, and uh, instead of like talking to me about it or whatever, she like put it on the, our group page that, you know, does anybody else have problems with their chickens, uh, your neighbor's chickens getting in their yards? And it was just kind of funny because it wasn't originally our chicken at all. It was just a neighbor chicken that we ended up, um, that we ended up like getting. Um, so I, I will show the chickens in another video. I'm in a dress and I don't want to go back there. Um, but we will, we will do that in another video. We're like kind of in our front yard cause that's where the tools are and the chickens are in the back, in the back, back, but, um, they will, they will want to play another chicken video. Huh? <laughs> another chicken video. Yeah, another one. We'll have to like plan one. Like yeah, yeah. So I can put one of my stories today too, so that you have a chicken video. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I think we have our potato box done. So we will edit this video. It will be shorter, um, and then it will be on YouTube probably in the next week, and then we'll write out all the instructions and stuff for that. So yeah, just for right now though, this is two feet. And the height is 32 inches. There you go. So 24 inches, 32 inches. So it's 24, and this is 24 plus a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And 32. And those boards are six feet long, and you cut them in thirds. These ones, yeah, the the fence boards. Mm -hmm. But if you get a two by four, then it is measure it. A two by four comes in eight foot boards, oh. and so you could uh, see if you made them thirty-two. So eight feet is um, eight ninety-six inches, and so if you did thirty-two, which I did here, it just happened to be, you could do three. Oh, from one board. Oh, from one oh. eight foot board. Oh. So, so if you did 32 You inches, would still, either way, would need two two by yeah. fours to but make it. Kind of be prepared. Cedar, these are only like under four dollars right now a piece. The two, a two by four of cedar, it's even a little bit more expensive. But that's just what it. That's just what it is. And again, we get the cedar boards because they're untreated, which we're growing food, and we yeah. don't want the chemicals. So, yep. um, yeah, that's why we buy the cedar untreated boards. So. Okay. I mean, you could just buy, you could just get regular 2x4s untreated and don't treat them, but they just won't last long. Yeah. They'll probably last you like two years. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Well, why don't you do a little in shot there with your little <laughs> potato boxes? <laughs> get to use some tools out here in the no rain. It didn't and rain. It actually came together. Which is pretty good. Not all my projects come together this nicely, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> I might have to put them on lives more often and then you get no, stuff no. done. <laughs> nope. I still got one more to make, so it's just, uh, you know. It'll be done. <laughs> all right, you guys. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you later.